first about your work. What is this foundation about? What is its mission and um, what do you hope to achieve through it? Mm. Actually, I have to say that at first, I really didn't mean to build a foundation, you know. But it comes from the movement and from the heart of young people that cannot just stay and do nothing looking at the situations about social issues, about human rights issues and environmental issues that happen around us in Kalimantan. So uh, this foundation just founded last year in 2016 and actually just May 16th is one year anniversary actually of this Ranu Willem Foundation. And Ranu Willem uh, itself comes from the word of Dayak Manyan language, that's my mother tongue. So it means living water. Uh, the idea is to use the media as a tool for social transformations, whether it is to educate people and to do advocacy work and to bring up the stories and the voice from the crown so to be heard around the world. Why did you feel the need for these stories to be heard? Do you find that they haven't had a platform? Yeah, I love that question. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I mentioned on the stage previously when I go out, you know, from Kalimantan Island, people always ask me two main questions. The first is, do Dayak people still eat human meat? They ask. And then the second question is, uh, do Dayak people wearing, you know, like bark skins or naked? So they, they like many people outside Kalimantan have a thought that we are still very primitive because Kalimantan is very famous with the forest and they think that, okay, maybe we we'll live in the forest just like orangutan. That's what they think. And I realized that it's because of lack of information and references that provided about us. So you talk about social issues, indigenous rights issues, um, through your media activism. Do you also talk about environmental issues? Is yeah. that a big focus for right. you? Right, so um, as a Daya people, we live very close with the forest, like with the environment. So when you talk about indigenous group, you cannot separate it from the environment issue. Because like I said, uh, the natives always the guardians of the forest, the guardians of the water, the guardians of, of the soil. Because we really know how to treat it as we live already hundreds of years, even thousand years in the island. So looking at the situation in Kalimantan now, which is very famous now, known by forest fire, pitland fire, and toxic haze issue. So environmental issue become one of our focus. And uh, yeah, we, we started, you know, like keep striving on bringing the voice from the ground related to this issue because it's not only about environmental itself, but it's also about the lives and the identity and the culture of their people. Have you seen a change yourself? You know, growing up you had happy memories of a healthy right. peatland ecosystem. Right. Today, you know, there's a lot of talk that a lot of it is being dried or burned right. for agriculture, so now it's almost a tinderbox mm. for mm. fire. Have you first-hand observe that um, in your community? Yeah, so oh, it's, it's not by research, but it's really by experience, you know, like I first I mentioned about the smell. Uh, when 2015, uh, the big forest fire happened, pitland fire happened in central Kalimantan, it's very traumatic for us. And start from that point, it's very easy for us to smell, you know, there is something burning somewhere in the pitland. Now, just just only a, just a bit, you know. But we know this is the smell of 2015. Mm -hmm. We recognize that, and it's really you know like in opposite. with I remember what I remember when I was a kid, and uh, I also like like to go adventure still. You know, like going to the pitland area and pick the wild fruit, like what I did when I was a kid, and I realized something: the taste is different. It's, it's bitter. Mm. You know, but I remember this fruit, it must be very simple. Why it's bitter? It grows in the same pitland or it's already different. So that's why I realized the pitland already changed around right. us. Now that you've seen these changes, what are some of your concerns? What do you think some of the biggest challenges are uh, for yourself and your community? Previously, we didn't realize anything about this, you know, when the pit and fire happened, we just think, okay, this is a natural thing that always happen because it's already started since 97. So including this year, it will be 20 years for us to, to see the fire around the pitland. But uh, what become uh, our concern now is 
the split lens actually when it burns you know it resulted the particle a very small particle only size 2.5 micro and it cannot be filtered by your lung if it enter your lung and it will dissolve with your blood and if it go to your like blood stream or your brain if it cause stroke it can cause lung cancer and also it can cause a uh, heart attack and it's different with the particles that produced by vehicle pollutions. This is produced by peatland fire. And this is the thing that we keep breathing, you know, in our body for 20 years. So it's very essential issue for me. It's, it's really related, you know, the destroy, uh, destruction of the peatland, the fire of the peatland and the health of the people. Because this is the matter about, about the lives, you know. So peatland matter, people matter. So it becomes one thing that we cannot just separate it and it becomes our concern. Yeah. And I think on that note, um, in 2015, you, you lived through that, you experienced that. Um, you were referencing some of the things you saw, which were quite traumatic. If you can just recount yeah, how, that, how that changed your community and, and maybe sparked mm. something in yourself. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, it's so painful you know when you lose someone that you loved it's so painful and i saw that in the eyes of the people that i met i went to the villages to bring the medicine to bring help for them and they said this is what we need this is what we wait so far and they didn't have any access to get masks and to get medicine and we recorded the stories about those who loved their loved ones and they cried it's, it's really painful, you know, for us, like, it's different, you only know, okay, there, uh, some people died, and uh, because of haze, because of fire, but when you listen to their story, when you watch everything by your own self, you just cannot stop. It's very difficult for me because I'm not the outsider that come to help the people, you know, I'm the one that lived there, and I experienced it that it's very difficult for us to survive in that, in that kind of situations. We live in the town, in the city, and we have a mask, at least compared to the others that live in the villages, they have nothing to survive and to protect themselves. So that's why I said this is, this is very essential. and. We started from a very small thing. I started to talk to my friends, my communities, um, what we can do about this. Yeah. We are not the one that can change the policy. We are not the one that have a lot of money to bring these people, maybe like evacuate themselves out from Kalimantan or to bring the tank of oxygen to each house to help their children so they can live and breathe. We couldn't do that, but what we can do? We just start with that, like I said in the stage, we start with cooking. We cook for, for the local firefighters. And when you have a very good intentions and determination to do good things, to help others by sacrifice yourself, so the way will be opened, mm. you know. And that's exactly what we experience. We just keep ourselves, we ride motorbike for hours to bring all the supplies to the villagers. and start from that point you know yeah. like we bring the stories we we make it be heard and people say we never know that mm. because now we know we want to help you and and that's what i feel uh, media is very powerful thing to change you know for social transformation and it changes us not only in our mind but also in our hearts mm. and even though sometimes it's very challenging to do this because yeah, like I said, we are actually can choose if we want to be a victim. But no, we don't want to be a silent victim. We want to be a hero. We want to be the one that stands for our people. So that's why we kept doing this.